On July 1, 1863, the Union and Confederate armies converged at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. There, the opposing combatants engaged in the bloodiest battle ever fought on American soil. Bullet holes riddled houses. Buildings of all makes were turned into makeshift hospitals to deal with the influx of wounded, and the dead began to pile up. Amongst this chaos, residents of Gettysburg sought any shelter that they could in an attempt to protect themselves from the deadly small arms and artillery fire. Unfortunately, the town was not unscathed, as a portion of the borough sat on the front lines. On the morning of July 3rd, near 8.30 a.m., a woman of the name Mary Virginia, also known as Jenny Wade, was shot dead while kneading dough in her sister's kitchen on East Cemetery Hill, making her the only civilian killed by fire during the Battle of Gettysburg. Jenny Wade was born in Gettysburg 20 years prior. Her family most likely referred to her as Jenny or Jen, but printing errors after the war resulted in a variant spelling of her nickname being widely distributed. Being one out of six children, Jenny helped earn money for her family by becoming a seamstress with her mother, Mary Ann Philby Wade. Her father, Captain James Wade Sr., was often absent from home and spent more time in jail than he did with his family. Jenny may have became engaged to her childhood friend Johnston Jack Skelly before the war since she had a photo of him in her pocket when she died. However, there was no official engagement announcements or wedding before he enlisted in the 87th Pennsylvania Infantry, where he served as a corporal. Georgiana, Jenny's sister, who was known as Georgia, also became engaged before the war and married her sweetheart in 1862. The couple moved into a two-story red brick house at 548 Baltimore Street, Gettysburg. The house then later became known as the Jenny Wade House. Her husband joined the Union Army as a private and was not in Gettysburg during the Battle of Gettysburg. He was also absent for the birth of their firstborn son on June 26, 1863. Four days after the birth, General John Buford's Union cavalrymen rode into Gettysburg. A day later, Jenny and her mother moved into Georgia's house to care for her and her newborn son, and to hopefully be safe from the impending battle. While the Union Army was in Gettysburg, bullets pelted the side of their house. One bullet flew through the window of their house and hit a bedpost of the bed Georgia was lying in with her days old son. An artillery shell also crashed through the roof and remained in the house for 15 years, fortunately never detonating. Regardless, the family continued caring for the soldiers. On the morning of July 3rd, Jenny awoke earlier to fetch water and knead dough to make bread and biscuits. The dough she was kneading was destined to become bread for the soldiers. Unfortunately, a bullet flew through two closed doors and hit her in the shoulder. It lodged itself in her heart and got trapped in her body by the corset she was wearing, where she then died instantly. The dough that Jenny was kneading at the time of her death was also later baked into bread by her mother. It made 15 loaves to be distributed to the Union soldiers. Union soldiers helped wrap her body in a quilt and either brought her to the cellar or buried her in the backyard immediately. She was moved to the town's German Reformed Church in November 1865, and her body was eventually moved to Evergreen Cemetery, the site where President Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address. In 1900, with tireless efforts from Georgia, Jenny was given a large gravestone and a perpetually raised American flag. It is one of the few sites in the United States with a perpetual raised flag in honor of a woman. Unknown to Jenny, her presumed fiancé, Jack Skelly, died nine days later from wounds sustained in the Second Battle of Winchester in June of 1863. Jenny was treated as a hero after her death for dying in the service to her country. Georgia's house became a tourist destination to those who visited the Gettysburg battlefield and is known as the Jenny Wade House today. In 1882, her mother successfully petitioned the government to grant her a pension for her daughter's death. With the unfortunate, gruesome accidents that happened at the Jenny Wade House and the wars going on around it, there is no doubt that this house is haunted. Being one of the most haunted things at Gettysburg, the Jenny Wade House now stands as a testament to the horrors of war. But that is going to be all for today, guys. I hope you did enjoy that video. If you did, make sure to leave a like on it and also subscribe for more content like this. And comment down below what was your favorite part of this story. But with all that said, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.